Hello and welcome to a brand new edition of Inside Out on the Road, a show where we'll focus on individual stocks with in-depth analysis, deep dive into the financials and tell you about the key risks and triggers going forward. So let's not wait any time and go to our first stock. My colleague Nigel travelled to Alibag and gets us this very special deep dive in Delta Corp. Inside Out on the Road is taking a deep dive into Delta Corp, which is the only listed gaming and hospitality company in India. It's founded by Mr. Jaydev Modi, a first-generation entrepreneur and leading Indian real estate visionary who transformed the company into a gaming and leisure company of international standards. He's expanded the gaming business throughout India with a core focus on the state of Goa. Well, the company focuses on three large segments, gaming, online skill gaming, and hospitality. The casino gaming business has its largest exposure to Goa and some exposure to Sikkim and Nepal. Well, in Goa, they have three Delton vessels and also have two land-based casinos in North and South Goa. In Sikkim, they have Delton Denzong, which is a land-based casino in partnership with Hotel Welcome Heritage and commenced operations in FY19 on securing the license from the government of Sikkim. While in Nepal, they have Delton Casino, which launched its bookings in FY20. Their online gaming segment is via Delta Tech Gaming Limited, where online poker is hosted, while Rummy is currently offered through a separate platform. Their third segment is hospitality, and that comprises of Delton Daman, which is the only five-star hotel in Daman, which has state-of-the-art banqueting, conferencing, and open lawn area. They also have Delton Suites, which is an old suite hotel in North Goa with an integrated large casino. Let's put some numbers to these three segments then. The last couple of years, well, it's been affected by the pandemic. So we're focusing on a contribution to the gross revenues in the first half of the fiscal. The casino gaming division contributed 80%. Online skill gaming division contributed 14%. While hospitality division contributed 5%. Well, the casino gaming division, that contributes all of its a bit, at least in the first half of this fiscal. What supported the company is that they have a debt-free balance sheet and they're sitting on cash of around 550 crores. And this could move up owing to cash generation from its core business and also the money that they'll raise from their subsidiary Delta Tech Gaming's 550 crore IPO. The company has stated that they are planning to utilize the proceeds of this IPO for organic growth and to strengthen their technology infrastructure. Well, let's run you through the risk as well. Overexposure to the state of Goa is a geographic risk. The company is also subject to several laws and regulations, which includes GST and tax-related news. And also, ESG concerns could plague them, as institutions may avoid large investments in companies that engage in businesses like gambling. Which brings us to the shareholding pattern. Now, institutions used to hold more than 27% stake in the company, but that's come down to sub-20%. 33% of the holding is with the promoter entity, while HDSC, well, they hold a sizable chunk from the fund side. Finally, the key triggers that shareholders will be tracking, they include scaling up of the existing business, the Daman Casino license court outcome, and the GST Council decision on the implementation of GST. They'll be crucial near-term triggers that the street will be tracking. Finally, the long-awaited response to Delta Tech Gaming IPO that's something that the street will be looking forward to. Well, to understand more on the company, let's get straight to a chat with Mr. Jaydev Modi. Well, sir, it's good meeting you. Here to learn about the company. Well, Mr. Modi, you know, things have been looking up for the entire country and everyone's coming out of this pandemic. The mood is such that that unlocked trade is picking up. And your company, well, you would be a key beneficiary. Could you tell us what's the sense? The second half of this year or the third quarter could be the best ever? Well, it's on track to be the best ever. Mm -hmm. We had a, a, a good first half and uh, we are on track to do uh, better in the third and fourth quarter. So I'm very hopeful things continue the way uh, you know they have been. Uh, Goa's really exciting for everyone today a lot of visitation etc and uh, that drives our business so well that's right you know sir so goa is the core part of your business and maximum exposure comes in from there 
But what about the Daman project? You are putting a fair bit of money out there. So out of your total gross block, how much of that is allocated towards uh, the Daman project? If you could give us a sense, and I ask you this, because you're not able to uh, you know, get the optimum results from what you have invested. So in terms of return ratios, if I strip it off the money that you put in the Daman project, well, that it could be fair, fair more interesting. But give us some numbers. A very valid question and very valid uh, observation. Mm -hmm. Our gross block is at about 1150, 1170 crores. And out of which uh, Daman is 455 crores. So on the balance, 7, 800 crores is what we are, you know, the asset that we are really sweating. And the day Daman uh, materializes, uh, the entire gross block will start uh, sweating for us and uh, we'll, we expect to do much, much better. But we, we invested this kind of money in Daman only because we thought that it was all a done deal, etc. But now, you know, we had to litigate. Hopefully, uh, we'll get a, a, a judgment in our favor mm -hmm. and uh, this, this will correct itself. Okay, all right. Uh, you know, talking about uh, Daman and you're hopeful and you're rather optimistic. But the stock market is waiting for when was the last hearing? When do we get a final outcome from this particular court case? Because the litigation has been going on for very, very long. Yes. So on the Daman court case itself, what's the latest update that we have? So the matter has been going on. It's been heard. Both sides have been heard. Now it's uh, due for final hearing for the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. It comes on board every day and the, and the court uh, runs out of time. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, the matter has not been heard so far. So it can happen any day. The day the court has time to hear our matter, it will be heard. And then we hope to get a, uh, an answer, you know, one way or the other. Uh, we are also waiting very, very eagerly. And uh, hopefully it will happen soon. It can happen any day, frankly. Would you want to give it a time frame, you know, because everyone's been waiting for quite some, quite some time. Could it be a couple of months? Do you think in this fiscal, that's FY23, we are still, you know, a few months away. We have another quarter to go. Do you believe that we could get an outcome with this long pending case? Theoretically, yes, we should. But the way it's been going on for the last one and a half months, uh, it's looking like it can happen any time. So I really can't put, I can't put a finger on it. I'm just, we are all just hopeful that it's heard and uh, the logical and the right thing happens and the judgment hopefully goes in our favor but I can't put a time frame on it, uh, Nigel. Okay, you must be getting initial trends though for your Goa uh, projects as well. You know, the vessels, some bookings, you know, end of the year must be chock-a-block. Oh yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. Uh, could you give us a sense out there if you want to put it to us, uh, you know, qualitatively, or you want to give us a couple of numbers as well. Are you totally sold out? The last, uh, meaning last, uh, the, the last 10 days of December and the first four or five days of uh, January, you'll be lucky to get a room anywhere, including in our hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be lucky to get a spot, uh, you know, at the casino. There, there, there's a lot of uh, visitation, and sometimes we have lines outside. We are, you know, we are trying to um, kind of address that, and we know that, you know, we don't want people to wait, etc. So we have, we've taken steps, etc. And it'll happen. I think we'll, we'll make it very smooth, but it's crazy. It's crazy every year. This year is going to be crazier. Okay, and what about, uh, you know, your balance sheet is something that holds you all in good stead. Now, if you could tell us what is your current cash in your books that you'll have, the last updated number, if you could tell us, because that's something that always gives some bit of valuation support, given that things are quite uncertain in the industry that you're dealing with. You know, you have regulations, you have taxation moves as well. So yes. what's, what's the cash, what's the cash uh, in the books? So see, right now we are, after investing uh, more than uh, 120, 130 crores in a real estate project in Goa, which we were forced to do because we owned the land mm. and we wanted to uh, cash out. The only way to do it, we wouldn't get a buyer to buy the land, mm -hmm. the big ticket item. So we are building like 250, 300 apartments there. And after investing 120, 130 crores over there, plus investing another 30, 40 crores in our new ship, mm -hmm. we still have a cash of about 150, 200, uh, sorry, 550 crores in our books. Mm -hmm. And um, the real estate money, which we invest and when we sell, etc., 
we are expecting to get back about 250 crores. You've spent around 130, 140 crores out on the real estate project. And what is the total number of flats you'll be selling out here? Or if you could tell us, as of uh, you know your rough estimate, what is the realized value you could get from this real estate project that you're putting out? And also give us a, a number. Uh, have you utilized all the land that's available out here to set up these, uh, this real estate project? Uh, we've uh, we've uh, used the entire land. We've uh, designed six buildings, residential buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, we have roughly, give or take, 250 apartments of two and three bedrooms. Mm -hmm. We will start selling mid-23. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope to, uh, when, when the buildings are all totally up, we are well into construction. And um, I think we will complete the entire sale uh, within a year after we open. Well, uh, Mr. Modi, uh, you know, I wanted to ask you a couple of more factors out there. Now, you have around 550 crores. You'll be realizing some money from this real estate project. And as you estimate, it's roughly around 250 crores odd. But you also have a holding in Adwani Hotels. What are you all planning on doing with that? Well, um, we'd like to, you know, uh, monetize that. We'd like to sell uh, our holding in Adwani. Uh, but we have nothing right now. We, there is no visibility. But the moment there is an opportunity, we are sellers. Okay, the other one that's going to be generating a lot of cash for the company, as well as for the subsidiary, will be the long-awaited online you know, gaming segments IPO. Yes. What's the update on that front? Could you give us a timeline? And what's the quantum of the total, you know, of the money you're looking to raise? As of your annual report, it states around 550 crores odd. Give us an updated number. So that is the number that we are expecting to, uh, to uh, raise. Uh, roughly 250 crores uh, and uh, 250 crores which come into Delta because we are diluting our holding in Delta Tech Gaming. Mm -hmm. And about 300 crores into the company itself for organic and inorganic growth. After post-IPO, Delta will still own 70 to 75 percent of Delta Tech Gaming and the balance will be public and the time frame I can't really comment on. You have already indicated uh, you know that there's that in case that Mopa Airport does see the light of day which is likely in the month of December itself well that's going to be a, a tailwind for the company because you have a high amount of people who are coming into uh, Goa so their core business you know obviously more number of uh, visitors and also you have that ambitious project where you're setting up an integrated resort out there. Yes. What is the total money you're looking to spend on this resort? Well, um, the earlier budgeted for around uh, 2,200 crores, but it's now gone up with inflation, etc. We are trying to keep it within 2,500 crores. Mm -hmm. We are very, very close to the new airport, yes. which is now being inaugurated on December 11. 11th. 11th, yeah. So we think that initially it will, of course, drive our, our current business. Yes. And in the, in the medium term, it will drive our business for the resort, the integrated resort that we are putting up. Like but today. when does the integrated resort you know, get commissioned? I mean, when should it? 2025? Uh, from now, about three and a half, four years. What about the other two smaller segments of, uh, you know, of the business? Not the casino online business, but the online business and the hospitality segment. As of the first half of the year, both of them have generated a negative EBIT number. Do you see that turning around? At EBIT level, will be positive, uh, hopefully, in this uh, second half. And uh, also, all the efforts we've made in online, uh, in the investing in marketing, etc., is now, you know, kind of uh, helping uh, drive that business. We're doing much better now. And we'll continue to do better. We, uh, you know, it's a very, very exciting business, frankly. We want to grow it, uh, you know, in five years uh, should be equal to our, our offline business, uh, which is our plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's hope we are able to do that. So you're saying that the online business will be as okay. much as the casino business. So you're looking at an exponential growth exponential. out there. Well, Mr. Modi, you know, you're sounding so optimistic about business. You have a good business that's flourishing as of now. You have cash in your books. You have plans to expand the other verticals as well. You have around 33% stake in the company. Wouldn't you want to have a bigger chunk in there? I wish I could. You need a lot of cash to buy into a company that has a market cap of more than 6,000 crores mm -hmm. to have any, anything of uh, 
of substance one has to put in uh, a lot of money which if i had i would 100% but i did buy some shares 6 months ago mm -hmm. and i haven't sold shares except for once about 5 6 years ago we where my daughter's three trusts sold some shares never sold shares and i did buy some shares 6 months ago because you know the price was attractive but i wish yes if i have half the chance i would do it let's shift focus to the other end of the spectrum then you're the first generation entrepreneur what about the succession plan we are a professionally run business and i still got uh, a lot of gas left so you know succession plan is there in my mind mm -hmm. and uh, will be implemented when the time comes but right now i have the energy so you're still firing oh yeah absolutely all right and uh, you know the other niggling worry is What's going to come out of the GST Council meet? What is the decision that's going to happen out there? I wanted your comment on this. You know, as of now, as you all have repeatedly maintained that yes, you are paying GST, but the implementation of GST is something that the stock market is tracking very, very closely, and that could have an impact on business as well. So, your comment on that? So, see, um, initially the the council appointed a group of ministers mm -hmm. to look into this. The group of ministers made a report which uh, didn't fly mm. and uh, uh, the council asked the, the, the group to go back to the drawing board and uh, you know look at the industry uh, again and um, that's what happened then the GOM did a lot of work they visited uh, there are three verticals there's a horse racing vertical there is online mm -hmm. and then there is the casino right so they've got they've uh, gone to race courses, they've gone to casinos, they've, uh, you know, kind of met with all the online uh, gaming uh, companies, and they finally understood that each business is different. You can't bracket it, and yeah. you can't, you know, uh, I mean, one uh, solution doesn't work uh, for all. So they've understood, and uh, um, the logical conclusion would be, at least for casinos, would be to continue the way we've been paying uh, GST or service tax or uh, gaming tax or entertainment tax the way we have been. The fear is that it will be implemented on, uh, you know, on the bid itself. When someone comes it's, you know, to play, hmm. so that is the fear. They are saying on sale of chips. The uh, sale of chips. Which but that's not viable because you know, sale of chips does not create the action of playing. Right. You can buy chips and not play. Right. Then what happens? Can you go and get a refund of your GST? So that won't work. The concept of GST was to be revenue neutral for the industry, mm -hmm. but they took us from that 15, 16 to 28 percent, which we we kind of swallowed, and uh, we still managed to uh, you know do all right. So the the fact that the, we are at the highest level mm -hmm. and we are paying GST the way it's being paid all over the world. Right. So in the next couple of months, we'll have clarity on a whole host of these issues. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Mr. Modi. Thanks so much for speaking to us Thanks, on Nigel. CNBC TV. Adin. The first time we've uh, kind of met, and I hope to meet again. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, that was a deep dive into Delta Corp, but it's time to slip into a break. We'll come back with another interesting stock. and exchange is in the spotlight on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Inside Out on CNBC TV 18. And the spotlight today is going to be on Iron Exchange, which is an end to end water solutions provider to industries and municipalities and has its capabilities around water treatment plants. It is also involved in operations and maintenance to manufacturing and supplying the required water chemicals. So, usually, the water business value chain consists of three levels. The first one is providing customized water treatment solutions and project management services, which is basically around these two provide customized water treatment, then do management of project services as well, where we have players like Huayat Equabag, Siemens, Toshiba. Then we have on-site service provider, which includes regular maintenance and operational support, in which we again have Huayat Equabag, there's Siemens, G Water, Toshiba. Third is producing a wide range of water chemicals. Here we have companies like Shembon and Vasu Chemicals. So interestingly, Iron Exchange and Thermax is present in all the three segments. So let's talk about Iron Exchange. Company has three segments. Engineering business where company designs, engineers, builds and maintains medium and large size water and wastewater treatment plants. Second is chemicals business, which is basically manufacturing of water treatment chemicals. And the third is consumer business, which is water management solutions beyond industries to home, hotels and hospitals. So it's basically water purifiers for home. 
Engineering contributes large chunk to revenues at 53% with EBIT contribution of 27.5%. Chemicals business contributes 35% to revenues but has higher margins and contribution to EBIT is at 73%. Consumer business is still small at 11% of revenues and is loss making. Now let's talk about financials. Companies' revenues in past couple of years have been moving higher. FY19 was 1100 crore rupees and since then it has come to levels of 1400 crore rupees and halfway into FY23 at 800 crore rupees. Margins also have moved higher to levels of 14% versus 9% earlier and that's a big jump. EPS also for the company has been improving from 64 rupees in FY20 to 111 in FY22. 71% of the revenues of the company come in from domestic markets and 29% come in from exports. And going forward, if we talk about the expansion plans, total capex on expansions is expected to be upwards of 200 to 250 crore rupees. Let's discuss the strengths of the company now. There is a huge opportunity in waste and wastewater treatment and government has rolled out policies for clean water as well, leading to major capex in this segment. And in terms of margins, company expects FY22 margins uh, at elevated levels of 14% to continue at FY23 as well. But at the same time, we need to look at the risks as well. Company has receivables from Sri Lanka and that area has been facing economic issues. They have high receivable days at 180. And there has been a delay in signing of large orders which are largely government orders and company says there is extended decision making process where is government approvals covering multiple departments and hence the delay. Greenfield expansion also delayed due to delayed approvals and the dividend payout at 9% is also very low. Promoter holding at 27% also does not aspire confidence. But there are some big names which are invested in the company. Franklin at 2.8%, there is Nippon India at 4.81%, Abacus also has invested 3.05%. The stock at current valuations is reasonable, trading at 13 times one year forward APS. And with that, we have completely run out of time on this episode of Inside Out. It's a goodbye from Nigel and I. But do write to us and tell us the companies you want us to discuss and you want to hear about. And we'll feature these on our show. Thanks a lot for watching us today.